Welcome. Believe it or not, we're here for our final midweek devotion, and so we thought we would tag team this together. And what we're going to do, it may not be overly spiritual today, but we're going to just briefly look back and then look ahead. And one of our challenges in doing these is to keep them short. So we're going to try to keep this uh, short between two pastors talking. So we're going to start off just uh, looking back at uh, 2020, which obviously you all knew that it was a difficult time. And uh, for me, the, one of the hardest parts was just seemed to be almost every day conversations about COVID and what we as a church are going to do, how we're going to come out of it, how we're going to minister to people. And it was a daily continual discussion. And then add to that, there were some other challenges that came our way that uh, quite honestly by themselves would have been difficult. Adding that to everything else uh, was uh, just made it that much harder, but God is good. Um, and with that is kind of what did God do that was good out of this? And, and for me personally, uh, Lori and I were blessed by God to be able to get a house and at a place that we just absolutely love to be able to share with our kids and grandkids. And then my daughter, Lindsay, got married mm -hmm. um, through COVID. And so that was exciting. But uh, the other thing was just to see God working behind the scenes and, and some of that uh, putting people in places, things in place to come online, to have the equipment, the ability to do that. And then the other blessing was to finally to be able to get together outdoors and worship outdoors. I think everybody that came in that was just a, a wonderful time. And last thing just want to do with looking back for me and then Randy's going to share is um, what's a verse that stood out. And one that is very familiar to me and probably for you is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. What a powerful verse during this past year and one that we can hang on to. So what about you, 2020? Good stuff. It, again, it, it's hard to believe that 2020 is over. Um, some of the harder things, I, I really like what you touched on there from obviously just having to talk about COVID all the time, but also feeling like you needed to talk about COVID all the time and leadership just because that's where people were at. And uh, really for me, one of the things that, that stood out, the hardest thing was just I isolation, right? How mm -hmm. how I felt isolated. I'm sure you all did so often, and and just the wearing that that has on on who we are as human beings, and and that was hard. And then for me, I think the the second part that really stood out is just how how small it made me or us feel. Who who would have thought that something like the church or a church worship worship service would be a question, right? I mean, every Sunday of my entire life, there's been a church service to go to, and to have this change of like we're not even sure that a church can meet or a, a ball game is going to happen empty stadiums and and so many other things we're just so uncertain about this whole uh, year it's just been hard with that but he did god did use some of these things for good in fact he used all of it for good we're still learning that but but the idea of of isolation or being home i'm, I'm sure some of you felt that too just just a slowing down a little bit for a generation now we've been running at a pretty high pace i think i know our family has and and probably you too and it just helped me to slow down to be home with my family much more often uh, to just spend time together around a dinner table and and some of those things within our family i think from the church it's been an amazing sight to see us uh, blessed financially mm -hmm. The way that you all have responded and, and really a lot of people have just responded and God has provided for this church in amazing ways so that we can do even more. And then finally, the thing that I think it added this time of isolation showed us as humans, no matter what our personalities are, we long for community. Mm -hmm. and, and anybody, I think we miss that community. And so uh, there's a reason for the church, of course, to worship God, but also just this interaction among us as people. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk a little bit about 2021. We're, we're excited to get to it from a, just lots of different reasons. There's things to be hopeful about and going on. But, but I hope that we can learn from a few things. My hope for the church is that, that we would use this little bit of suffering that we've had in the past year. The, this change of, of the way that we view the world, uh, our relative smallness that I talked about, and the greatness of God, and then that we would respond to that as a church, that we would not be the same mm. because of the experiences that we went through, what God took us through as individuals and as a congregation. 
And so uh, a verse that I have, it's, a, it's that New Year's resolution time of year, right? Where we <laughs> we're set these things and, and of course we giggle about them, but, but what will we do differently now based on what we learn? for longer than January and February, hopefully, but who are we going to be um, as we've been made new? We have to look and, and see if we're going to be different. There's a verse from Colossians 3, uh, verse 7 that says, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. How will we respond to the idea of what we used to be? As we put it into Hebrews uh, words uh, that we've learned, how will we get off of the, the milk that we've been living in probably for a long time and grow in our spiritual uh, walk with God and, and a desire for a deeper relationship with him, a deeper way of getting to know him. And so th those are some of my hopes for this year. Yeah, I think um, for me, it fall in line with that and actually from Hebrews. And again, things happen with God's hand in it and us studying Hebrews, doing the message, sermons in, in Hebrews uh, would be my heartbeat for myself and hopefully for us as a church that we would just mature spiritually um, kind of quit looking at our own interest, as Paul says in Philippians, and, and look at the interest of others. We have become, we are a me generation, we are me people, and uh, to be able to know right from wrong, to do good, not evil, truly care about others, think of others, um, I think the f church could flourish in 2021 mm -hmm. because the world around us is looking for hope and peace and joy and uh, we can offer that and that's pretty exciting and and that would go to a verse that uh, i use a lot and that i continue to encourage us to grab hold of and understand is galatians 2 20 says i have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ who lives in me the life i now live by faith in the son of god who died for me and loved me and and that whole identity, I think we have an identity crisis in our culture mm -hmm. in a multiple ways. And for us as believers to understand, to walk, to live, to hold on to who we are in Christ is truly life-changing. And I encourage us to continue to hang on to that, to grow into that, and, and therefore to grow spiritually, to get off the milk and, the, and, and to live for God. And, and so with that, that whole idea of spiritual growth, there's a lot of things that plays into that. One is reading the love letter God gave us through his word. And, and uh, I encourage you, if you have not, or maybe you've done it once or twice and read through the Bible in a year, we've put on our webpage two different reading plans. One is a five-day plan and the other is a seven-day plan uh, to read through the Bible in a year. And again, if you haven't ever done that, what a great time to do that, to be able to feed off of God, His Word. And again, uh, Randy just mentioned uh, a week ago in his sermon that every scripture points to Jesus Christ. And so to read the Bible, to know Christ, and to become more like Him should be our goal in growing. So. Uh, let me pray and uh, commit 2021 into God's hands. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you so much for those who have been part of us and for uh, us to be able to give a little bit of uh, spiritual fruit and depth into their lives. I pray that you would work. And <clears throat> we commit this year into your hands. Father, I truly pray that we would see you work in a, a miraculous way, as difficult as 2020 was to see you and your kingdom grow in 2021 would be so exciting. And so we pray your will be done. And we continue to commit uh, this church, our lives into your hands in Jesus' precious, most holy name we pray, amen. So happy new year. Happy new year, see you guys in 2021.